Well, I, I, I can never live up to our speaker this evening, but I'll try. Uh, our guest tonight is uh, Dr. Cynthia Brown, a certified, board certified radiation oncologist. And I believe uh, Dr. Brown graduated out of Stanford University. Uh, she'll correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. A few years right. ago. Yeah, quite a few practicing. years ago. <laughs> she's been practicing medicine for 30 plus years in this in the state of Michigan, I believe. Yes. Uh, she's also a national speaker in the field of nutrition and chronic disease. She's a member of the Nutritional Advisory Board for the Cancer Treatment Centers of America, and her approach to patient care is holistic and centers on mind, body, and spirit connection. Uh, she brings a special focus of lifestyle and dietary changes to her medical practice, and we've had the, the absolute, I would say, joy, honestly, and privilege to have Dr. Brown associated with uh, Body Wise International for quite a few years, I think probably over 25, I know him. Since 96, 96, yep. 96, there you go. Mm -hmm. So uh, Dr. Brown, uh, welcome to the call. Really appreciate you taking the time. I'm, we we're gonna be talking uh, this evening about uh, supporting our immune system, really the, you know, the, the important parts, obviously all of our parts when it comes to immune health. But uh, uh, what I'd like to do now is, is talk a little bit about immunity. I've got a few uh, questions I'd like to ask you, but do you, do you have anything just in general you'd like to start the call off with from your perspective or uh, you want me to just ask you some questions? Well, I will say that the immune system is the foundation of your whole body. It runs every part of your body. You don't think about that. You think, oh, it just you know, helps you fight off infection and things. It's important in every single system mm -hmm. of the body. And the thing about the immune system is as long as it's working, you don't really know anything about it. You don't think about it. But because you don't see it, you don't feel it. It's not like your heart beating or breathing or something like that, or your muscles moving. Um, but when it goes awry, and there are many reasons that happens, then, you know, all hell can break loose. And people I see, you know, I'm an oncologist. So um, people come to me all the time and say, but I've always been so healthy. You know, how did I suddenly get this cancer? Well, I said, well, you didn't just suddenly get it. You know, this has been brewing for a long time because you haven't been taking care of yourself and your immune system was not able to counteract that. So there's lots of things you can, you know, try to do, but it's very hard to change our lifestyle. Most cancers are lifestyle induced. Very few cancers are actually a genetic. And we don't like to change our lifestyle unless we're really hit over the head with something important that says, now you've got to do it. And you just look at, you know, we're a, a nation of obese people. And, you know, we don't, we don't exercise. We know we shouldn't be doing these things. But we still do it because we think, oh, well, you know, you know, I still feel OK. I've, I've gotten away with this. And then, boom, all of a sudden something catastrophic happens and you realize, oh, now now it doesn't work. Well, let me ask you something. Uh, and I think I know the answer, but I always like to get a healthcare professionals perspective on this and uh, question kind of a two part. You know, are, are we post covid post variant or. Is it never going to be in our rearview mirror or is it always going to be around kind of like the flu? I think it's always going to be around like the flu. Um, and I think it's just been too widespread, too long acting. I mean, the fact that um, we don't even know really when it started in China because they weren't really letting on. We know, OK, it was um, December of 19 when they they let the cat out of the bag. But I think that was only because they couldn't hold it back anymore because it was because it was becoming so widespread. So had it been there already a year, six months, you know, don't know. But, um, you know, I don't think it's ever going away. And I think I've had it twice. I've been vaccinated. Well, the first time we didn't have vaccines yet, but, um, and I think it's going to continue to be there um, because it's, it's in the whole world. And I think there's no part of the world that, it, that has escaped. And so when you have something of that magnitude, it's very hard to make it completely dormant unless you have really, really good vaccines like what we did with polio. Well, now polio is on its way back. People are getting polio again because people didn't get vaccinated. 
And, um, and so we're starting to see polio again. And polio kind of lives in the dirt, the virus, but you know, people weren't getting it anymore, but now it's, it's back. So um, the vaccines for COVID are not as good. It's not like polio where you get, so it's like a flu vaccine. They have to look at what, what are the variants of that year and try to put it together. And, but they mutate so fast and polio wasn't doing that. So um, we were at smallpox, we were able to kind of put those mostly in our rear view mirror. Um, but I do put on appeal for people. Um, polio is a devastating thing. Give, and it's, it's a, not a live virus. So get your kids vaccinated for polio. And the other one is, um, is HPV. And when my oldest kids were teenagers, the vaccine had just come out. And I said, ooh, I think I'm gonna wait a little bit and kind of see how it goes. Well, of course now HPV is ubiquitous. Everybody's got HPV and, and I'm dealing with those cancers. And, and it's now it's 50% of all the head and neck cancers are, are driven by HPV. And people don't don't think about that. And these these head and neck cancers are devastating. We cure an awful lot of them, but people end up disfigured. They have long term complications that really affect their quality of life. And you know, so it's not just some. It's not just cervical cancer and anal cancer. It's it's all these head and neck cancers. And um, and so my second set of kids. Yes, I got them vaccinated. And I'm hoping you know that will protect them. Uh, we think that was a pretty good vaccine. Um, you know, I don't think the COVID vaccine has been that great a vaccine, um, but we've learned more and, and, and people who are vaccinated are not dying as much as people who aren't vaccinated. So by and large, you may still get it, but maybe not to the same severity. I see. Well, you know, I, I hate even to, the general public, for the most part, always looks at flu and cold season because that's been the, the mantra since I can remember, and I go back a long ways. So, um, but, but from, and you know our supplements backwards and forwards. So mm -hmm. as we go into the cold and flu season or whatever during the winter time, I think people should look at this 24-7, 365 myself. But uh, as you look over our supplements, what do you recommend from a immune support uh, insurance policy, if you would, to try and give your body the best chance for optimal health, especially when it comes to immunity? First of all, I tell my patients too, I recommend a high quality multivitamin. I send them to AM and PMs usually because um, I think they're excellent. They're not that expensive compared to some of the other ones. I've been mean, perfectly frank. My husband takes one that's you know one hundred and fifty dollars a month, um, but most people can't do that, and it's an awfully fine vitamin. But you know, is it that much better mm -hmm. than AM and PMs? I I'm not so sure it is, and so that's what I put my patients on. Um, my kids are on it, and that's for basic health. That helps your your cells run better, and and I tell people if you don't give your cells what they need to make repairs you'll end up eventually being sick. If your cells can repair, you'll stay healthier. I tell people, I make patients all the time, if you don't repair your car or you don't repair your house, eventually you're gonna have real problems. They go, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I say, if you wanna take the real inexpensive vitamins, they use the forms that don't work. That's why they're cheap. Um, and so that doesn't help you. So you have to use one that uses forms that actually your cell is going to use to make repairs that will get into the cell and use to make repairs. So that's usually my foundation. And then I'm saying, you know, AG immune or AE, AIE 10 is a brilliant product um, because it resends the chemical signals that tells the cell, the immune system, what to do. The whole body is run off of chemical signals. That's Inside the body, it's, that's all the information is going back and forth with chemical signals. Even your thoughts are translated into chemical signals called neuropeptides. So all the cells of your body know what you were thinking. That's how mind-body medicine works. That's only been discovered in my lifetime as a physician. So the whole field of mind-body medicine is just now exploding. 
but all the communication in the body is sent by these chemical signals um, called cytokines. And AIE-10 is a cytokine product. It's resending the chemical signals that tell the immune system what to do. And if it already knows what to do, it says, I already know that. And so it kind of ignores that. But if it doesn't know it, if it's going, you know, not working properly, it goes, oh, okay, that's what I'm supposed to do. And so with proper lifestyle, it can actually help repair the immune system. And I tell people, if you live on Big Macs and donuts, it's not going to, it's not going to do the trick. But if you're trying to do clean living and have good nutrition and do other things like get enough sleep, um, you know, we're a nation of people who are sleep deprived and I could certainly uh, be at fault for that myself, but, but you need sleep. Your body repairs at night. Your immune system repairs at night when you are asleep and when it is dark. So if you sleep with the TV on or electronic things in your room or, you know, lights on and you don't repair the same way at night. So, you know, I'm a big believer room should be dark and don't have your kids have leave the lights on. And so get a magic wand. This is what we did. You get a magic wand, which my husband still does with our 16 year old every night and says, abracadabra monsters and snakes be gone. And he goes around the room waving this magic wand and you know, then the lights all go off. And, you know, and so she's still, she'll come in and say, you know, I, I, I need, I need abracadabra. You know, you haven't done that yet. And so, you know, we love that, that she still wants that, but it was a great comfort to little children. You had this. And we had one of these wands that it had water inside and it had all these little sparkly things that flowed back and forth and it looked very magical. And then the lights went out and it was dark. And, um, but you said, no, you see, you've, you've taken it through the closets and under the bed and, you know, there's nothing, there's no monsters here. And so, so dark is important because light comes in to your brain through your eyes and you have a pineal gland in the middle of your brain and the pineal gland makes melatonin. Actually, the gut also makes melatonin, but the pineal makes a lot of it. And that is going to deal with our circadian rhythms. And, but it also is a major regulator of the immune system. So a lot of people don't realize melatonin is a hormone that regulates the immune system. And so if you don't have the proper amount, your immune system is gonna, isn't going to work. And if you have light on in your bedroom at night, the immune system is not going to be repairing. It has to repair and it does most of its repair between 10 at night and two in the morning. And so if you don't go to bed till two in the morning, that's a problem. And so night owls, we know people who are night owls, they have more disease. People who work night shifts, they tend to have more disease. So you have to then have eye shades that are really, really good or, or blackout shades so that you can really get your room dark because otherwise your body will not function properly. Interesting. Okay. Well, never, I've never heard that. So this is, I've been around here for a long time listening to you and you, you bring on between the wand and, and circadian rhythm and all this other good stuff. This is, this is good information. Yeah. I, the, I have other a, thing, the other thing I like is beta C. I liked it better. I'll be very frank when it was yellow and smelled like chocolate. Um, and, but um you know, I'm, I'm not in the business of, of designing the ingredients, but um, beta C, when you, take, when you take vitamin C, just plain ascorbic acid, you can, you can get 200 milligrams in your blood. And after that, the, the rest you pee out. But if you have bioflavonoids, you can stack it up into tissues more. And Beta C has more bioflavonoids than any other vitamin C I've ever found. I look all the time because I'm always wanting to know, you know, is there something better? Is there something better? And I have not found it. And bioflavonoids are mostly found in the skins of fruits and vegetables. And so, um, and so if you look at the ingredients in Beta C, there's a lot of ingredients. And the more bioflavonoids you have, the more you can stack it up into tissues. Your white blood cells, which fight infection, 
can take up to 80 times what you can get in the blood. And so when you take beta C, and I tell my patients, if you're starting to get sick, you take two every hour while awake. And you will raise, you will just zoom that level up in your tissues that increases proliferation of your white blood cells and increases what we call chemotaxis, which is the ability to find their target. And white blood cells actually fight cancer as well. But, you know, I'm mostly telling this for, for fighting viruses. It doesn't work as well for bacteria, but it works great for viruses. So I never get sick when I fly anymore. I'm, I just don't get sick. I always have a bottle of beta C on my desk. I have it in, some in my purse. I carry it with me when I fly. Um, and my whole cancer center lives on this stuff. And they say, oh, I come down and say, I'm starting to get something. Can I borrow some? I'll go get some later and I'll, I'll pay you back. I say, yeah, you know, here's 10 and, and pay me back. I make them pay me back. Um, and, and they all know it works. Um, and, and if you just take, you know, plain old ascorbic acid, it's not going to work. And so Linus Pauling was really right about vitamin C, but you have to do it right. And when the government redid his, his studies, they didn't do it right. They just used plain ascorbic acid. And so it was destined to fail. This is what often happens when the government wants to take over a, a study that's a nutritional study and they screw it up because they don't use the right form. They don't, you know, they, they skimp on the dose. They, you know, do something. There was a big article in New England Journal of Medicine, our biggest, one of our biggest journals in the world for medicine, a number of years ago on echinacea that showed how it did not help um, prevent the, or treat the common cold. And I had people come in saying, see, 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 see here, see here. And I looked at it and I read it and I said, oh yeah, they use the part of the plant that we throw away. That's not, med <laughs> that's not active. That's why they used it because it was cheap. And they didn't bother to ask anybody, is this going to work? Um, and so why they would spend millions of dollars running a study and not get a natural path or somebody to bless the study is beyond me. I, I shouldn't, I, I got off on that track. But, um, but you know, the kind of things I, I tell people, if you want to try to stay healthier, you, you get better sleep, better quality sleep, you know, no light in, in your um in your bedroom, you're gonna take these good supplements, you're gonna avoid sugar. The amount of sugar in one can of pop, soda pop, will decrease your white blood cells ability to fight infection by 50% for over six hours. And so you start your kid off with pop tarts in the, for breakfast. And then what do they do? They go to school and then they have, you know, you put a candy bar in their lunch and then they come home and they have, you know, they're eating sugar all day long. It's no wonder they're always sick. If I see somebody who's like, these kids are sick all the time. Oh, they catch everything. I go, I know they're, they're living on sugar and um, get them off that sugar. And that's going to make a huge difference. Great um, advice. Yeah. And the other but thing you need to lower stress. Stress lowers your immune system. It interferes with your immune system because our bodies don't know the difference between the stress that we're under now and the stress of running away from a saber tooth tiger. It's, you know, we're not that far renewed. We, we haven't changed genetically that much. And so they're thinking about these short term stresses that you've got to be able to get away. And so what does it do? It says, well, I can take energy away from the immune system and, and put it into your muscles so you can run. And I can take energy away from the digestive system because you don't have to digest if you're about to be eaten by a saber tooth tiger. So we'll put that on hold as well. And so when you then have a, a society with chronic stress, you know, too much noise, noise is a huge stress on the body. And, you know, especially people live in, you know, big cities, we didn't, we weren't designed to live up with all that noise and honking horns and all those kind of things and too much traffic and a job you hate and kids, <laughs> kids are a huge stress. Um, and I tell people, you have to pick your stresses. What are the ones you can get out of your life? And then how can you change the way you respond to them? And they say, well, I can't change. You know, my kids always make me so mad. I say, no, 
you choose to let them make you mad. You can choose to not to look at it differently. And you know, some people seem to thrive on stress. That's because they don't see it as stress. They see it as a challenge. So, you know, if, if you're really being hit over the head with some huge lifestyle issue, it's amazing how much you can change. I send people for self-hypnosis, um, emotional freedom technique. I mean, various different techniques to change the way you respond to some kind of stimulus. And it can happen. And you can just say, you can just let, so it doesn't bother you anymore. And that's a very healthy way to live. It certainly is. And Dr. Brown, you know some. I've got some more questions, but I, I, I'm just fascinated by some of the stuff that you've been talking about. Is open this up for uh, a Q&A if Dr. Brown has a few more minutes that she can uh, spare and, and have people uh, ask any questions they might have for her. Looks like Mackenzie does. Hi there. Good to see everybody. Uh, Dr. Brown, you're a hero. You always have been my hero and you continue to just uh, enthrall me. I am very much, I have never taken a flu vaccine in my life. I've had body wise. And um, I would wonder what your take is on flu vax. Well, I am required to get it because uh, as a health professional, I cannot work without getting that. But before that was mandated, I used beta C. And I did knock out the flu with beta C. Um, it took, I remember one time, it took me three days. I didn't feel great, but I could work. And, um, and then I beat it. And I personally do not have a very good immune system. And so um, I was sick all during my childhood. Um, in fact, I was just talking to my mother about it. And we were talking about, you know, the months I would miss of school and, um, and, and, you know, I, I just don't have a good immune system. So I'm always looking for things that I can do. And in a way, I am relieved that my work makes, forces me to get a flu vaccine because otherwise I probably wouldn't be doing it. And this way it takes the decision out of my hands. Uh, do my kids get flu vaccines? No, they do not. Have they ever had the flu? No. You know, they, they eat right and they take MMPMs and they take beta C and they take HMUN every day. So, uh, but I think it depends where you start. So, you know, you. we all have different I've, strengths. I've never taken, I've never taken. So just wanted you to support that. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And I'll get a wand very quickly. Oh, get a wand. <laughs> They're so fun. Oh, that, that, that's great. Uh, you know, Tom raises an interesting uh, question here about how much AG immune to take. And maybe we could spread that question out a little bit in terms of, how much should the average person take? And is there a difference in how much you think one of, you know, a, a patient you might see should take? In other words, somebody who's facing a severe immune challenge. You know, I don't think we have enough data really to, to say that. And um, I think for somebody like my kids take one AG immune a day. They have for years and years and years. And they aren't sick very often because, you know, I can't stay home with them. My husband can't stay home with them. And so, you know, they need to stay healthy. Um, I take two AIE tens or four AG immunes, or sometimes it's two and what you know varies, whatever I have on my shelf, um, every day. Um, because I don't have a great immune system. And I'm an asthmatic. And ever since I started AG immune, I have not had to go on steroids. To me, that is huge. I hate being on steroids. I don't like the way they make me feel. And I, you know, I don't even think I brought an inhaler on this trip. I sort of forget about it. I haven't used an inhaler in years. It's, it's improved my immune system that much. Now, when I have patients who are recovering from chemotherapy, I don't know the dose during chemotherapy. I say, I tell them, I don't know the dose. It costs money. And so my empiric observation based on no data, except what I'm seeing, is that if you take at least one AG immune a day during your chemotherapy, it seems like your immune system doesn't, doesn't go down quite so much. And then once you're done, I put them on four a day. Now, since you have to take two hours between each bill, um, you know, if you start doing too much more than that, it gets a little bit trickier. And, um, and so, so that's what I choose to do. 
but, um, and when I had COVID, I took four a day um, and, and recovering from COVID both times. And because I had to be very careful too about what I am recommending because a lot of my fellow doctors don't really believe in what I'm doing, although they've pretty much come around over the last 30 years. I mean, I used to not be allowed to talk about nutrition with my patients unless they asked me first. So my nurse would go in first and say, you know, you know, Dr. Brown's a holistic doctor. She knows a lot about nutrition. So if you have questions, you should ask her. <laughs> and then I could say, oh yeah, they asked me. Um, but, um, but now they don't do that at all. Because in fact, I've got them doing all sorts of different products to decrease some of the side effects of chemotherapy. And it took me a long time to get them to that point, but they've come around. And I teach the fellows. We have a, a oncology fellowship uh, training program and they're a lot more open. So I've got them doing all these things that is great. And then they teach the attending doctors. So it's, it works out well. And if all goes well, when do we expect the uh, hospital to be in condition to be open? March 1st. I'm heading over there on the 24th of February. The president of Uganda is coming on March 1st. We're doing the ribbon cutting. We no, may not have enough. We won't have the whole hospital open. It's supposed to be 48 beds. We won't have that many. We won't have it all open. The OR might not be open because we won't have things, but we'll be open in some kind of ability at that at that point because that's what we've promised and um and the people are so excited they are so excited <laughs> nothing really does slow me down i'm pretty determined um yes, you but are. you know it just it just shows what you can do though you get you know you look at um who has changed the world and has it been big committees and stuff no it's been mostly individuals and people would say well what can i do you can do a lot, you know, it, and people say, well, I don't know anything about fundraising. I said, do you know, any, do you know any people? Can you tell the story? People love to hear this story. And I hear all the time. I tell my patients and they go, oh, oh I'm going to, I'm going to come back and bring you a check. And I said, thank you. I love a check because when you, when you put it on our, our, our donation button on the website, then we have to pay PayPal for part of that. So I love it when it's actually a check that we get the whole amount and they do. I mean, it's often not very much, but, um, but you know, and that makes them feel good too. You know, it does make you feel good to be helping with, to be giving back and helping with a project like this. Okay. And um, I hope everybody stays healthy this uh, winter season. 